Hello and welcome to this video time times and half a time part one 1330 to 1444 or thereabouts it actually starts in 1317 but you'll see so I'm just going to zoom out and look at the full wave 1330 to 2128 and this is a section we'll be looking at here in part one so there are seven sections each section is 114 years so as you see on the boys here we're looking at pretty steep decline and we look at the girls also in decline what joy at this time <laughs> But hey, they came from a high place, so, you know, you don't probably feel so bad coming down. And this is what it looks like combined. So, yep, just pretty much steep decline, but coming from a high place. So here we're looking at the first sheet, and the 19-year wave boy and girls yearly ups and downs there you can see with the red and the blue lines and that's a full 19 year wave July 1317 to July 1335 and actually when we go to the next sheet the next one will start on July 1336 so if there's something slightly out within a few months I'll, it will just be on the edge so it all links up okay so if we and if you look at the yellow lines that's where it shows you where it crosses the date line and the the wave so you can see what part of the wave it's on and the little yellow circle indicates which bit of writing it is for so the first one is December the 30th 1317 pontifical degree sank to Romania against spiritualists so we know what the Pope uh, the church is like at this time you know not open-minded clearly <laughs> as we kind of know them to be <clears throat> and just skipping forward so the big thick green line you see there on 09 1330 that is the beginning of this 798 year 42 month time okay we'll go to the next one april 1st was it a joke so we're into 1318. Berwick upon Tweed is captured by the Scottish from the English. Dear Scots invading England. So what I'm tending to show here would be a pattern that while the wave is up, then not so bad things are happening. You know, there are still going to be wars and battles and things, but they're not as big and they're not as bad. And that when the wave goes below into its lowest point, that's when the worst things are going to happen. But also, that's kind of when heroes come through or um, people working for God, you know, come through and and. Um, are victorious if you like anyway but also they may do things in the good times too it's just anyway let's let's carry on see right so the next one we jump so there was there's a gap you know there's quiet times when there's not nothing happening you know August the 21st 1321 
160 Jews of Chincon, France, burned at stake. So yes, we're going to see a lot about Jews. And again, the next one, June the 24th, this is now 1322, Jews are expelled from France for a third time. So, I haven't got to the bottom of why they're so disliked, but we will see in a bit one of the reasons why, possibly. October the 14th, Robert the Bruce of Scotland defeats King Edward II of England at Byland, forcing Edward to accept Scotland's independence. So that was 1322 as well. July the 18th, 1323, Pope John the 12th proclaims theologian Thomas Aquinas a saint in Avignon. So, you know, the Pope decides who's a saint round here. Then we have another jump, February the 1st, 1327. Teenaged Edward III is crowned King of England, but the country is ruled by his mother, Queen Isabella, and her lover, Roger Mortimer. So we can have a look at a picture here of uh, Queen Isabella with all the troops and this uh, Robert Mortimer fancies a bit of this <laughs> they fancy each other uh, there we go so this is why I wanted to start it before 1330 really just to get the setup of what was going on just before 1330 so we've got a new king now we've got a new king that means the king died and um, doesn't didn't actually say it in this uh, website but uh, there's some dodgy stuff perhaps um, that this Roger Mortimer killed the Edward the second or both of them you know but it's not fact so that's probably why it's not written down in so much in the history there May the 1st 1328 wars of Scottish independence end Treaty of Edinburgh Northampton the Kingdom of England recognizes the Kingdom of Scotland as an independent state and it's this this thing obviously wasn't being done so much by the king the teenager king but more by uh, the Queen Isabella and Roger Mortimer and it actually does Edward III a big favour um, because it does sort of settle things down back at home May 12th 30, 1328 still anti-pope Nicholas V a claimant to the papis, papacy is consecrated in Rome by the Bishop of Venice. So we're going to hear a lot of bit about anti-popes and a bit about anti-kings. So this is kind of one of the major storylines going on. You know, who who has the right to call themselves Pope and does a country benefit to have a king if the Pope has powers over all the kings in the region so this is going to be very much the storyline and here we are just coming up to this big green bar and it's more about the anti-pope so 1330 August the 25th anti-pope Nicholas V having obtained assurance of pardon presents a confession of his sins to Pope John the 12th at Avignon who absolved him so the, the anti-pope, the person who was claiming to be pope, and there were two of them at the same time, you know, one of them has given up, and and if you like the with Pope John the Twelfth, the established order is firmly in place, um, which you know is bad for people <laughs> because they're not the true ones they're not they're not good like god okay so we go past the green marker we begin 
September the 27th, the Battle of Plaus between the Kingdom of Poland and the Teutonic Order is fought. A little look at a picture here of a Teutonic knight. You may find that you recognize those horns and the that type of cross. So this is Teutonic. Now we're going to hear more about Teutonics, and they, but they're they're similar to the uh, what the other ones called the um, the Knights of Templar. They're a bit like that, you know. Um, so are they good or bad? Well, just remember what it said in the Bible this 42 months the beast will be given will be given you know the world will be given over to the beast for it to blaspheme and do all sorts of things well you know Pope order back in place Teutonic order established so here we go and where are we at the bottom of a wave so We'll carry on. Next one, November the 4th, 1333. Flood of the Arno River causing massive damage in Florence is recorded by the Florentine chronicler Giovanni Villani. So, I'm just... I'm going to be looking at some of these uh, natural events that happen and just note where they happen on the wave so this one is at the bottom of a male wave and it's a flood Just take note to that next one November the 23rd um, <laughs> I've just seen what's what's coming 1334 November the 23rd at St. Clement's flood dike breaks at Flemish Zoo's Dutch coast okay and that's when the men are up but it's similar time of year, November. I think we're going to see more things happen in November later. Okay, on to the next sheet here. On to the next sheet. July 1336 to July 1354 and the first one we have is July 16th 1338 the six electors of the Holy Roman Empire signed the agreement of rents confirming Emperor Louis the fourth so Yep. Next one, January 26th, 1339, English King Edward III proclaimed King of France. So I guess something must have been going on to allow that. Let's see if I have a little, little picture of him in his younger years before his beard went white. And then we got a big jump, so really... Very quiet at this point. Not much happening at all, is it? You know, it's, the, it's like the calm before the storm. If you know your history, you know what's going to start happening. Right, the next one we've got is March the 16th, 1345. Holy Spirit glides above fire. The miracle of Amsterdam, legend. And then on March 20th, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars conjunction thought cause of plague epidemic. So obviously that was after the case that they thought maybe that was um, the cause of it or the signaling signaling of it. And then we get so the plague has kind of started but hasn't spread everywhere yet. July 1346 11th Charles IV of Luxembourg is elected Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire so I think yeah, we've got a picture of him and a little bit about him 
King John of Bohemia who died at the Battle of Creasy so so that's why he became Charles that's why he was um, elected the Emperor because his father died and here we hear about it August 26th Battle of Creasy south of Calais in northern France Edward III's English longbows defeat Philip Sixth Army cannons used for the first time in battle. So that was August 1346. <clears throat> so how? Why would he be made emperor a month before his father died? Or maybe I don't know. <clears throat> Can't get everything right. <laughs> uh, July the 11th. 1347, heir to the Bohemian throne, elected German anti-king Charles IV. So he's an anti-king now. See this word anti-king. So they're all for the um, emperor. August 4th, 4th, English troops conquer Fort Calais. And here come the English. To conquer with the bow. All right, which one's next? Hidden there behind the yellow lines. January 25th year is 1348. Fruly earthquake 6.9 destroys Villac, killing 5,000. Pretty big. So we're in a downtime, very much the um, female going down at that point. And it's an earthquake. April 23rd, first English Order of Knighthood founded, Order of the Garter. So that's on St. George's Day. Men are coming up. September the 21st, 1348, Jews in Zurich, Switzerland are accused of poisoning wells. So plague is onset in, um, in Switzerland and mainland Europe and the Jews are getting the blame November the 1st 1348 the Black Death reaches London on or about this date November the 15th Rudolf of Oran claims Jews have confessed to poisoning wells and the next one is not so clear but there it is March 21st this is 1349 now uh, between 100 and 3000 Jews are killed in Black Death riots in Erfurt, Germany next one December the 5th 1349, 500 Jews of Nuremberg massacred during Black Death riots. August the 29th, no, yes, August 29th, 1350, Battle of Winchelsea, the English naval fleet under King Edward III defeats a Castilian fleet of 40 ships. So, play's going on, but Battles have got to carry on. Next one, August the 4th, 1351. Sea battle at Zwartewal. Willem V beats Hawkinson and the English. Okay. 1352, January the 6th. French King Jean II introduces Order of the Star. So this is to copy the order of the garter that the English did back in 1348 and one would imagine if the French are copying the English it's because they feel like it's working it's doing some good and um, by now I would expect that Yes, most definitely Edward III is no longer being told what to do by his mother. He's being a king.
<clears throat> Last one on this sheet, December the 7th, 1354. Margareta van Bavarian, son Earl Willem V, signs peace treaty. Okay. And here is a picture, because I missed it, of the Black Prince, who actually at the Battle of Creasy, King Edward III left the battle in his hands. And he was known as a, a really good uh, tactician, warrior, whatever, on the battlefield. Right, next sheet. July 1355 to July 1373. <clears throat> May 7th, 1355, 1,200 Jews of Toledo, Spain, killed by Count Henry of Trastamara. They're still picking on the Jews, and it ain't going to stop. November the 2nd, 1355, English invasion army under King Edward lands at Calais. Next one. 1356, September 19th, English forces under Edward the Black Prince defeat French at Battle of Poitiers and capture the French king during the Hundred Years' War. October the 18th. Basel earthquake, the most significant historic earthquake north of the Alps, destroys Basel in Switzerland. Now look again, that's happening on the female down wave. And yes, we are above the halfway, <clears throat> but only just. And it's on a female down, that's an earthquake on a female down. Again. Uh, next one, June the 3rd. 15, 1357, Peace of Ath signed in modern Belgium settles Brabant succession. Uh, I didn't actually look that one up. Most of the ones that I, if I didn't know what they were, I looked them up. Most. Not that one. <laughs> Next one, May 8th, 1360, Treaty of Tigny signed by English and French, ending the first phase of the Hundred Years' War. Uh, next one, July 27th, Danish King Waldemar IV destroys Visby, Gotland. Now, interesting about Gotland is the little island um, just off Sweden, between Sweden and Finland. And it's reportedly where the the Viking Aryan race originated from. There's mystery around it. Yep. Anyway, next one. 1362 now. January the 16th. A great storm tide in the North Sea destroys the German island of Strand and the city of Rongholt. Okay, so that's not really showing anything on the wave that's particularly, well, women are coming down, men are up, but nothing conclusive, it's a bit in the middle. Next one is October the 4th, 1363, end of the Battle of Lake Poyang. The Chinese rebel forces of Zhu Yongzang defeat that of his rival Chen Yuliang, one of the largest naval battles in history with 850,000 taking part, approximately. So it may be surprising at this time, the Chinese navy was probably better than anything else, but there we go. The problem was they were blowing each other up. And that's happening on a down wave, just coming down to the middle. Next one, 
September the 29th, Battle of Ore, English forces defeat French in Brittany. Next one, October the 26th, Comet 55P-1366 U1 Temple Tuttle approaches 0.0229 AUs, that's sun distances of Earth. Okay, so is that. Comet. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to see. Next one to April 1367. April 3rd, Battle of Navarrete, La Rioja, Castile, Alliance of King Peter of Castile, and the English defeats Count Henry of Castile. Castile being a place. In Spain, I believe. Didn't look that one up either. I did look some up, honest. Uh, next one, January 1368. In a coronation ceremony, Zhu Yangzang ascends to the throne of China as Hongguo Emperor, initiating Ming Dynasty rule over China that would last for three centuries. That's good. Get an order over there. Uh, next one, March fourteenth, thirteen sixty-nine, Battle of Montiel. Peter of Castile, Peter the Cruel, with support from England, is defeated by an alliance between the French and his half brother Henry the Second. So look, I mean, these you're in the pit of a down wave. And um, when it says his half brother Henry the Second, that's actually Peter the Cruel's half brother, not um, some French bloke's half brother. So you've got these families, you know, sort of in these depths of the waves. That's when they're likely to not trust each other, and that's that's what I'm saying with these waves. They're sort of it's internal mood. It's how people are feeling about stuff. Uh, so it's, I mean, it's in March. So <clears throat> it's when the male and female um, lines are crossing. And I certainly think I've noticed one thing with this is that, you know, there can be wars that men want to fight and wars that women want to fight, you know. Sometimes women want wars, don't think they don't, because they do. I mean, even a couple of years ago, perfectly, well, she's not that rational, but never heard her speak like this. And she, you know, she, mature lady, said, what we need is a, we, we need a war. We need a war, you know, like to sort things out. Mm, lucky it didn't happen. Anyway, on we go. May 22nd, 1370, Jews are expelled and massacred in Brussels, Belgium. Again, in the down wave, is, well, these things happen in all time, but yeah, we're getting some nasty stuff happening. <clears throat> September 26th, 1371, Battle of Maritza, Serbia versus Turkey. June 13th, 1373, Anglo-Portuguese Treaty of Alliance, world's oldest extant, and I looked that up, it means it's still in existence, signed in London. Wow. So that... Oh, it's funny. I might have one of these pictures in the wrong place. There's a picture of a battle there. Battle of Navarrete. Battle of Navarrete. Oh, there we go. That was on April the 3rd. So there's a picture for you. Great, eh? And that is another picture of Edward the Black Prince. And this is a picture of the... You've probably seen it. The expulsion of the Jews, how they get shoved around, um, and the dates. Which is getting 
kicked out of everywhere basically uh, a lot of them ending up in Poland Netherlands Africa and the Ottoman and we hear later how well we don't hear but because I wasn't bothering to copy it but a bit later on sort of how the papal states allow or they put out degrees saying it's okay to be mean to Jews and stuff like that and there are a few that attempt to protect them but then there are some that say it's okay to be bad to them so yeah right next sheet I mean you think it's hard to look at it was hard to make <laughs> now I can't read for it all I didn't have to do it all in one go though but here I am as well carry on <coughs> July 1374 to July 1392 June 24 1374 sudden outbreak of St. John's dance causes people in the streets of Aachen Germany to experience hallucinations and begin to jump and twitch uncontrollably until they collapse from exhaustion interesting weird women are on the down wave they're the powerful ones. October 10th, 1375. West Friesi sea wall breaks, flood in northern Netherlands. Men are on a down wave. I don't see any full pattern with that. Next one. April 28th, 1376. English Parliament demands supervision of royal spending. Okay. Next one, January 1377, Pope Gregory XI moves the papacy back to Rome from Avignon. February 3rd, 1377, mass execution of population of Cesnia, Italy, by Breton troops of Giovanni Acutu, acting as legate of Pope Gregory XI. So he's basically moved papacy back to Rome and then executed a load of people nice guy that's sarcastic dick by the way uh, next one August 1378 August 9th cardinals declare Pope Urbanus the sixth lawless anti-christian devil so he must be a sort of an anti-pope September the 8th, 1380, battle in Kulukovo, Moscow's great monarch, Dmitri, defeats the Mongols, beginning, beginning the decline of the Tatars. So these things are happening, you know, in an, in an up time. That could be good. Next one, July 15th, 1381. John Ball, a leader in the Peasants' Revolt, is hung, drawn and quartered in the presence of Richard II of England. Now, we've moved on to Richard II. Oh, yes. I missed one out. Going back to May 22nd, 1377, Pope Gregory XI issues five papal bulls to denounce the doctrines of English theologian John Wycliffe. Um, John Wycliffe is a superstar, and even I suspect that he may have been Saint Francis. And he trans he's basically the first person to translate the Bible into English. And he created the Lollards. They were called the Lollards because they spoke the Bible in English. <laughs> And then they were accused as heretics later on the line, later down the line. June 22nd, Richard II succeeds Edward III as King of England. There we go. June 29th, French raid at Rye, England. So, French <laughs> wanted to test, you know, Edward III being a great king. Obviously, they thought, now he's gone, let's test out Richard II. And he doesn't seem that great. So, you know, he's and he's got peasants revolting by 1381. I'll try not to miss any more out. 
November 1382, 27th, Battle of West in Rizibek. French army defeats the Flemish leader Philip van Arteveld, killed and corpse displayed. Lovely. Next one, October the 22nd, 1383, the 1383 to 85 crisis in Portugal. A period of civil war and disorder begins after King Fernando dies without a male heir to the Portuguese throne, and just as it's coming down below the center point. Next one, August 14th, Portuguese defeat Castilians at Aljabarota, retain independence. The Portuguese are holding on. I think we've got something on one of these. Portuguese Ferdinand the First. I wondered about them. John I, also called John of Aviz, was King of Portugal from 1385 until his death in 1433. He is recognised chiefly for his role in Portugal's victory in a succession war with Castile, preserving his country's independence and establishing the Aviz dynasty on the Portuguese throne. So there we go. There wasn't anything much more interesting than that. <laughs> uh, July 9th, 1386. Battle at Sempac. Swiss beat Duke Leopold III of Austria. Lovely. We're in the down now. So there's... Seems that there's battles going on. February 24th, 1387 now. Charles III of Naples and Hungary is assassinated at Buda. March 11th, the Battle of Castanagro begins. So battles, assassinations. April 9th, 1388, Battle of Nafels, Glarius Swiss defeat Hasberg, Austri Austrian army. June 28th, 1389, Ottomans defeat Serbian army in the bloody Battle of Kosovo opening the way for the Ottoman conquest of southeastern Europe. So we've got a picture that's from the Battle of Kosovo. And we've also got another one showing the, the battle formations and the strategies. The Ottoman army in blue, and the Allied army so-called in red. September the 11th, 1390, Lithuanian Civil War, 1389-1392, the Teutonic Knights begin a five-week siege of Vilnius. So yeah, these Teutonic Knights are coming up again. So they were helping out Poland um, by raiding Lithuania, and they were pretty much just like thuggeries really, just had nice clothes <laughs> but they're like an arm of the Pope but they were establishing themselves in uh, Lithuania <clears throat> June 6th 1391 inhabitants of Seville Spain massacre 5,000 Jews see the men are on their down wave there August the 5th Castilian sailors fire attack Jewish ghetto of Barcelona Hundreds killed. August 24th, Jews of Palma, Mallorca massacred. So three separate incidents there, quite close to each other. Uh, everyone just, well, interesting to know exactly what was going on. They just saw them as bad luck or they just owed them money and easier to kill them. That's, um, that's quite possible. So I just had to have a sip of tea and a biscuit. <clears throat> then carry on with this sheet now. July thirteen ninety three to July fourteen eleven. And this is the penultimate one for this section. First one, September the 17th, 1394. Jews are expelled from France by order of King Charles VI. 
August the 14th, 1395. Utrecht Bishop Frederick of Blackenheim occupies Coavorden. Don't much, don't know much about that. Um, September the 25th, 1396. Battle of Nicopolis. Sultan Bajazid I defeats Crusades armies. So yeah, the Crusades are going about now, but these are the later Crusades. So the first one was 1099, second one um, <coughs> a bit later. And when you got to the fourth in 12, about 1220, that's when the Crusades were kind of going wrong and they started attacking Christians in mainland Europe and um, and Turkey and stuff and you know it was just wrong basically got in the hands of the Pope and stuff and then you've got the <clears throat> fifth sixth crusades and that's what these Teutonic uh, knights are, are very interested in you know they're trying to get established in Palestine uh, who knows, you know, maybe they, you know, they kept something all throughout this time, even through the Ottoman Empire. But anyway, we carry on. Uh, September the 26th, still down there in blue, still in uh, 1396, Sultan Bajazid one beheads hundreds of crusaders. Okay. Next one, June seventeenth, Union of Kalmar established between Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, and that's, you know, that's might not have held all this time, but anyway, that you know, it's in a good time. But there, I think we're beginning, yeah, this one, and maybe the next one a bit too do do tend to not really go with the rules so much as the ones we've seen uh yeah this this one particularly um seems to be like more things going on in the good times than than the bad times but we'll, i will read on we'll read on october the 12th 1398 the Treaty of Salinus is signed between Grand Duke of Lithuania, Vytautas, the Great, and the Teutonic Knights who received Samigotia. So anyway, that's a treaty. Whether well, that's good or not, you never know. Next one, August the 5th, Battle at Woskla, Tataran beat Russians and Litovs. So that's the Tatars. <coughs> Beat Russians and the Lit Litauers. Is that? I don't know if that's the Lithuanians or not. No, I'm not sure. Obviously, some weird thing. And then August the 19th, King Richard II of England surrenders to his cousin Henry. So, yeah, he didn't do too good, did he, Richard II? September the 30th, 1399, King Richard II of England abdicates. <clears throat> this how it's sort of, I think this is a Shakespeare story, isn't it? How. Sort of Henry, sort of felt entitled to the throne and sort of sneaked his way in. And Richard the Second was a bit of a pansy, I think. Um, September the sixteenth, fourteen hundred. Owain Glyndir is declared Prince of Wales by his followers. I did have a quick look at him. I'm not sure if I bothered with a picture of him because he just wasn't that interesting <laughs> no I didn't bother it wasn't that interesting um, which one's next uh, July 9th 1401 Turco-Mongol ruler Tamerlane Timur destroys Baghdad killing 20,000 no, I did have a look at him and he was a bit more interesting here see the Wikipedia page for him here Timur was the last of the great nomadic conquerors of the Eurasian steppe, and his empire set the stage for the rise of the more structured and lasting Islamic gunpowder empires in the 16th and 17th centuries. Timur envisioned the restoration of the Mongol Empire of Genghis Khan, 
and according to Gerard Hyland, saw himself as Genghis Khan's heir. Timur's armies were inclusively multi-ethnic and were feared throughout Asia, Africa and Europe, sizable parts of which his campaigns laid to waste. Scholars estimate that his military campaigns caused the deaths of 17 million people, amounting to about 5% of the world population at the time. You could say he don't muck about. You find out he's on your back. <laughs> you don't want to be around. Poor Baghdad. Um, I mean, that's a lot. That's a killer, but that's a big killer. And as you see there, it's on a male down wave. Next one, July 20th, 1402, Battle at Angora, Ankara. Timur beats Sultan Bajazid's Ottoman forces. So it's actually sort of doing uh, Europeans a favour in a way there. Um, next one is July 21st, 1403, Battle of Shrewsbury, fought by Perseus against King Henry IV. Uh, checked out the Perseus, they're sort of pretty cool dudes really, just sort of dukes or whatever in England. And uh, that's England's Henry IV. Because the French had one at the same time then. I'm okay, I did check that out. Um is this part of the revolt this part of the revolt? Let's read on. Uh no. Yeah, of course. He's, he, this is this is Henry the Fourth. This is he's he's might as well be a French king. So that's why the Perses are fighting against him. He's he's not king for England. That's why. Fourteen o four, January the thirteenth. The Act of Multipliers is passed by the English Parliament forbidding alchemists to use their knowledge to create precious metals. So even though <laughs> they were just worried they might be able to do it, and if they did, it would have mucked up the economy. And that was their main worry. Paranoid, no? We're going down, aren't we? Uh, June the 8th, 1405. I think it's Robert Arley Scrope, Archbishop of York, and Thomas Mowbray, Earl of Norfolk, are executed in York on Henry the Fourth's orders. So he's a paranoid king as well, you know. Uh, October the twenty-sixth, fourteen o seven, mobs attack Jewish community of Krakow. Again, more Jew hating. September the twenty-third. 1408, Battle of Oti, victory of John the Fearless, Duke of Burgundy over Liege. Next one, we're in 1409 now. March 3rd, Austrian Civil War ends. That's, see what I mean? Sort of, well, this one isn't so too, you know, there's a big gap in the middle here, not much going on. So it's not so true to the hypothesis that I have, but anyway, carry on. I said that a lot, didn't I? <laughs> March 25th, Council of Pisa opens, elects anti-pope Alexander V. Now check out this guy. This guy's interesting. Peter of Candia, or Peter Philages. He's known as Antipope Alexander V. He entered the Franciscan Order, uh, which is, you know, puts him in the good books in my in my book. And his abilities were such that he was sent to study at the universities of Oxford and Paris. While he was in Paris, the Western Schism occurred. Now, let's 
check out the Western Schism. The Western Schism, also called the Papal Schism, Great Occidental Schism, or Schism of 1378. The Schism is a split within the Catholic Church, lasting from 1378 to 1417, in which two men, by 1410 three, simultaneously claimed to be the true Pope, and each excommunicated one another, driven by authoritative politics rather than any theological disagreement. The schism was ended by the Council of Constance, 1414-1418. For a time, these rival claims to the papal throne damaged the reputation of the office. And there we can see a picture there of the, uh, the map. And just telling us which of the kingdoms and where the Holy Roman Empire is. Great. Uh, so let's go back to Alexander V. So while this schism was going on, Philages supported Pope Urban VI. He returned to Lombardy, blah, blah, blah. He became bishop of blah, 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 blah. On being created cardinal by Pope Innocent VII, he devoted his energies to the reunion of the church. In spite of two rival popes, he was one of the promoters of the Council of Pisa, and his political manoeuvres incurred the displeasure of Pope Gregory the Twelfth. I just don't like. I just don't get a nice feeling of Pope Gregory the Twelfth, who ordered Philages deprived of both his dignities as Archbishop and Cardinal. Well, there we go then. He's not very nice, is he? Uh, blah blah blah. Most polities in Europe recognised him as the true pontiff. Have I read that wrong? He was crowned as Alexander V. Yes, he was crowned, and people felt that he should be the true pontiff, apart from Scotland and Aragon. Da -da -da -da. He proclaimed and promised, rather than effect a certain number of reforms, the abandonment of the rights of spoils and procurations, and the re-establishment of the system of cano canon canonical election. Uh, da -da -da. He also gave out papal favours with lavish hand, from which the medicant orders benefited especially. Now, I think that's the Med Medinici family that we hear about in a bit as well. Alexander V suddenly died while he was with Cardinal Baldassar at Cossa in Bologna on the night of the 3rd or 4th of May 1410. His remains were placed at the Church of St. Francis. Da -da -da. A rumour that he'd been poisoned by Cossa who succeeded him as John the Twenty Third, 1410. So... Fourteen ten is kind of in the low parts, but sort of coming up. Uh, where are we? Were we on that bit? I know. Yeah, March twenty fifth, Council of Pisa opens, elects anti pope Alexander V, and then June twenty sixth, fourteen o nine. Council of Pisa selects Petros Philagi as third pope Alexander V. So third pope as the three popes now <clears throat> claiming to be pope. June 15th, this is 1410, Battle of Grunwald, one of medieval Europe's largest battles during Poland-Lithuanian Teutonic War. Polish king Vladislaw Jaglelo and Lithuanian Grand Duke Vitautas defeat Teutonic Ulrich von Jungingen. And I checked out Jungingen as well. And here he is. We'll do this quickly, shall we? Ulrich and his elder brother Konrad von Jungingen, as younger sons excluded from succession, took the vow of the Teutonic Knights and moved to the Order's state in Prussia. After the Knights had expelled the Virch Victor brothers from Gotland, again, Gotland's coming up, in 1398, Ulrich distinguished himself in the negotiations for the possession of the island with Queen Margaret of Denmark. So he, 
Did he get possession of the island of Gotland? You will hear some more about it. And last one on this sheet. June, July the 24th, 1411. Battle of Harlow, one of the bloodiest battles in Scotland, takes place. I had a look at that, and there wasn't much about it. So, we move on to the last sheet in this section. July 1412 to July 1430. January the 16th, 1412, the Medici family is appointed official banker of the pap papacy. So there we go, there's the Medicis involved. I don't know if you've heard of them, but they were around sort of with Leonardo da Vinci. We have helped fund him. Florence, they lived in Florence, I think. Um... April 9th, 1413, Henry V is crowned King of England. So something obviously happened to his father, I'm not sure. Um, June the 7th, King Ladislaw of Naples occupies Rome. Oh, before we look at that, let's just have a quick look at Henry V. Also called Henry of Monmouth, was King of England from 1413 until his death in 1422. He was the second English monarch of the House of Lancaster. Despite his relatively short reign, Henry's outstanding military successes in the Hundred Years' War against France, most notably in his famous victory at the Battle of Agincourt in 1415, made England one of the strongest military powers in Europe. So I really should find out what happened to King Henry IV, but he wasn't very popular at all was he I mean wasn't doing a good job so Henry V seems much better June the 7th 1413 King Ladislaw of Naples occupies Rome May 29th 1414 Council of Constance disposes Pope John Twenty-third. good so these are good things happening as things are going up. <laughs> July 4th, 1415, Angelo Corra renounces his claim to the papacy as Pope Gregory the Twelfth. October the 25th, 1415, Battle of Agincourt. Henry V's forces defeat larger French army and the longbow defeats the armoured knight. Okay, so it's a battle in a good time. Very famous Agincourt, isn't it? Uh, May 30th, 1416. Jerome of Prague burned at the stake for heresy by church, Council of Constance. So, Council of Constance aren't uh, putting up with any nonsense. Maybe they're not so great. Um, June the 12th, 1418. An insurrection delivers Paris to the Burgundians. I haven't looked that up. January the 19th, 1419. French city of Rouen surrenders to Henry V in Hundred Years' War. May 23rd, 1420. Jews of Syria and Austria expelled. December the 1st, Henry V of England enters Paris. March 22nd, 1421. Battle of Bolg. French defeat the English. So the battles are increasing, it seems, maybe. Because we're heading down below the zero point soon. May 23rd, 1421. Jews of Austria imprisoned and expelled. November the 18th, 1421. Sou Southern Sea floods. 72 villages killing estimated 10,000 in Netherlands. On a male down wave, that's about 3 1 on the old floods, and they were slightly different floods, so maybe we need to look at that because that's uh, about three of them happened on a man down wave. 
Next one, August the 31st, 1422, Henry the 6th becomes King of England at the age of nine months. So I think we heard when we read about King Henry the 5th that he didn't live very long. He was, he, so he was killed in battle or something. Uh, next one, July 31st, 1423, Hundred Years' War, Battle of Cravant. The French army is defeated by the English by the river Yon in Burgundy. So that uh, toddler king is doing all right. April 5th, 1424, Scottish King James I returns to Scotland after 18 years of detention at the English court. They felt maybe he was giving them bad luck and they got rid of him. That's what they do, don't they, when they're... Down in the down ways. <laughs> November the 18th, 1424. Storm flood ravages Dutch coast. Ah, oh, and this time it's on a man up wave, so it's 3 2. <laughs> but only ravages it. <laughs> uh, July the 19th, 1425. Duke John VI of Brabant pledges Holland, Zealand to Philip the Good. Oh. So who's this Philip the Good then? Here he is, Philip the Good. Philip the Good. 1396 to 1467. He was a member of the cadet line, blah, 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 the 15th century kings belonged. During his reign, Burgundy reached the apex of its prosperity and prestige and became a leading centre of the arts. Philip is known in history for his administrative reforms. His patronage of Flemish artists such as Jean van Eyck and Franco Flemish composers such as Gillers Bicois and the capture of Joan of Arc. Alright. Not really Philip the Good then, is he? In political affairs, he alternated between alliances with the English and the French. So he was two faced, non straight, talking, backstabbing, git in an attempt to improve his dynasty's position. As ruler of Flanders, Brabant, Limburg, Artois, Hanault, Holland, Luxembourg, Zeeland, Friesland and Namur, he played an important role in the history of the Low Countries. Certainly was a powerful guy. <clears throat> uh, where were we? Where were we? There we were. Next one, May 10th, 1426. Jews are expelled from Bern, Switzerland. Lovely. August the 7th, 1428. Valais witch trial proceedings begin in Valais, Canton, Switzerland. First organised witch trials. Now again, because there weren't, you know, there had been a bit of a gap. But, and again, that's paranoia, isn't it? Down there in those bottom ways and the women are down so they're all acting weird and the men are thinking what's wrong with the women and you know blame it on witchcraft next one may 7th 1429 english siege of orleans broken by joan of arc and the french army look at that women coming up so is joan of arc november the 4th joan of arc and charles de albert liberate the heavily fortified town of saint pierre le montier after a siege she was instrumental they wouldn't have done anything without her and then what happens may 23rd 1430 joan of arc is captured at campiang and sold to the english <coughs> terrible already There's Joan of Arc and the vision she had. Lovely picture. Uh, we didn't really come across Henry the Nav Navigator. It was pretty boring anyway. So that is it for this section. And um, my gosh. If you've stayed with me, <laughs> well done. I don't know if I've got the energy to come up with any conclusions at this stage. Um, except this, that I, I, f I feel more and more that um, there's something about England, something about Galloway, Britannia, 
Um, but the whole dynamics of Scotland and France and then the others and oh I tell you what well you know we'll get we'll get halfway through this and we'll we'll start making some conclusions I think okay ciao for now